Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, here with a review of the Corsair IQ-Link H170i RGB. Now this is a large 420mm cooler, one that's really easy to set up and wire into your system, and you can connect it up with Corsair's IQ-Link fans and other things quite easily as well. I'm going to show you how I swapped out the fans later on in the video, and also show you some thermal performance testing in a couple of different setups in the case. But the obvious nice highlight about the IQ Link setup is that there's no cables coming out of the pump itself other than the tubes, and the cabling runs through those tubes into the radiator, and then you have multiple connectors on that that allow you to connect it up with the fans on the system, and then to this controller, which then can then connect up to other devices as well. These little controllers can also handle up to 24 devices now, with 12 on either port potentially, and you can daisy chain the fans together and easily connect them up, including mixing and matching fans if you want to. So you can see a couple of different fan types there. And there are some complexities to this. It's worth mentioning if you don't know already, this controller, for example, requires PCIe power alongside a load of other connections that you can see here. Now I've got a separate wiring and setup guide that I'll link to in the description, which will help if you're a bit curious about this and the process for it. But the reason I'm mentioning this is because you'll need a PCIe power cable, which is the same one that you'd use for your graphics card. And obviously you need to make sure you've got a power supply that's able to provide enough spare for that to be able to plug this into the controller. And if you're running a GPU with multiples of these, this could potentially be an issue. So you might want to think about upgrading your power supply at the same time as getting the system. Now it will obviously work with AMD's AM5 platform of CPUs. And you'll need to make some changes to it that I've shown in the setup guide and how to do that because you need to switch out the bracketing, for example, on the pump. But the installation is pretty straightforward with some included standoff screws and thumb screws. You can easily secure the pump down over an AM5 socket, pretty straightforward. But for the purposes of the review, I'm using a Maximus Hero Z890 motherboard with an Intel Core Ultra 9 285K in a Haven 420V GPU case. And I want to talk to you about the things here because I was swapping out the fans. So to mix and match things around, I wanted to change the fans with these LX140 fans. The reason being that the case is white and a lot of the other fans are going to be using a white. So I wanted to make it sort of a contrast in the system with black and white parts. So you can do this, but it's worth taking this into consideration when you see the thermal testing later on. Now, obviously mounting this on an Intel CPU is really straightforward because it comes bracketed for Intel out of the box. So it's pretty simple. Although again, instructions in the full wiring and setup guide if you'd like to see that. But also the other thing about IQ Link is that you can remove the pump caps now and swap them out and upgrade them. So there's this VRM fan that you can get, for example, which you can throw on there. And I think that looks nicer. Also, there's an LCD screen option and there are other things that you can do. But this is the end build that I ended up with here where you can see the all-in-one cooler top mounted into the case and then obviously the VRM fan upgrade and the fan changes as well on the radiator. Well, the other thing I wanted to do was to test the performance in a couple of different ways. So I was doing some benchmarking and various different tests. So we're going to go through those. But the other thing is to show you the difference it will make for side mounting and how you can do that if you want to. So if you've got a case that can support it, you can side mount the radiator. And obviously you need to be able to support up to a 420 millimeter radiator. But what I've noticed here is usually a lot of people would like to do tubes at the bottom of the rad to prevent any air buildup over time where the bubbles might get into the pump. But with this one, it's quite difficult because the tubes aren't quite long enough. You can see they're quite taut there. I'm using a 5090 vertically mounted in this build. And because it's quite deep, it's going to interfere with those tubes as well in that position. So it's just not possible to do. Now, it's not a major problem because we can just do it the other way around. For this instance, I'm also going to be using the reverse blade fans on the radiator. So where I previously had the LX140 standard fans on there, exhausting air out of the top. Now I'm going to be using the reverse blade fans on the rad to pull air in through the radiator. Now, in my experience in testing in other builds, I found that side mounting or front mounting a radiator 
with intake fans can actually be really beneficial because it keeps the CPU nice and cool while also helping with the airflow in the system and not negatively impacting the GPU. So I wanted to run both these setups in the system to be able to then show you the difference between the thermal performance in these options if you wanted to do that so you can see what it was like and you'll see the results of that in a little while when I go into the thermal testing but the important point here is these reverse blade fans are working as intake fans but in a nice way so you can still see the RGB lighting and the rings around them. You can side mount the radiator and then it will pull air through this. So then I can also use additional fans at the top of the case where the radiator used to be to exhaust air out of the top through there. Now with the IQ Link setup as well, if you're clever about it, you can take the cabling from the fans and run them through from one fan to the next to the next to the next, daisy chaining those together. And as I said, you can potentially then use one controller with 24 devices connected to it. But because of this case and the way it's laid out, it became a little bit tricky for me to do that because I hadn't planned that forward enough. So I ended up with two controllers in the system. And that just obviously isn't ideal because then you need an extra PCIe power cable, which means another power connector from your power supply unit. But they're small controllers, so they're pretty easy to manage. And the cabling is not too bad. You do need a USB connection from both of them as well, though. And then you can set it up in IQ. And it works pretty well that way as well. So it's not an issue. But if you can, I'd recommend daisy chaining the cables together, linking them from the fans on the radiator to the next group of fans in the case, and then from those fans to the next group to the next group. So you can connect them up really easily to a maximum of 12 on either side. But if you manage to do that, then it makes life a lot easier and you haven't got the hassle of trying to work out where you're going to put these controllers and how you're going to wire them into your system. So it's something worth bearing in mind. And I wanted to show some of the little kinks that I came across along the way and problems with it. But you can see I'm running a cable from this up through the case and out the top and then connecting it up to the top fans where the other cables are already coming from the radiator and from other fans in the system. I actually ended up with six fans on the controller that came with the all-in-one cooler and then the rest were connected up to the other controller. But you can see you've got some really nice RGB lighting effects from the system here and from those fans as a whole. The LX fans look really nice and they actually run quite quietly as well. And I'll show you a sound test of that later on so you can hear it without me talking over the top. But what you'll find is it runs nice and quiet during gaming sessions, especially if you've got a decent headset. You won't notice the fan noise and it hasn't been a mega problem and it still runs quite cool. So now we're going to get into some of the testing. I'm running a 5090 in there as I said as well. And so obviously it's going to get a little bit toasty and that's one of the negative effects of it. Bear in mind it's vertically mounted too. So running the same tests in both different layouts with a top mounted radiator and then with a side mounted. So I can show you the difference side by side. So initially the scores were okay in Cinebench. They actually dropped a little bit as you can see when I side mounted. And the temperatures went up just a small fraction as well. Which I was actually surprised by because usually it's the other way around. But this shows the difference it can make from case to case. So then I ran OCCT, which is a thermal testing tool that runs for absolutely ages. And again, the same sort of thing. The temperature of the CPU was actually hotter when the radiator was side mounted. It's really surprised me because usually in these sorts of tests, in other cases I've tried, it actually ends up being quite a bit cooler. But you can see here we've got a maximum of like four degrees more overall on the core temperatures. And so interesting result in this instance, but maybe this case isn't pulling enough air in through the side there. So then I went to Time Spy Extreme and ran the test again. Another benchmarking test. So this is actually stress testing the system. So rather than just a benchmark, it runs for absolutely ages. So you can put the system under a decent amount of heavy load. And then you can see what the temperatures were there. Now, again, actually the temps are pretty decent here. And I'll show you the temps for standard gaming in a second. Because obviously these benchmarks and stress tests put it under more load than you normally would. But what you saw is actually in this instance, it was cooler on the side mount. So it's a couple of degrees cooler overall at the top end of what it was going through. So it was actually running cooler in, in that instance. So it's an interesting difference between these depending on what stress test you're using and what you're doing. So there can be quite a little fluctuation between those, but there's an interesting difference there. And that was more what I was expecting, a reduction in temperature. And actually it's usually more significant than that. So it's quite interesting there. But you can see that from the stress test itself, you're looking at a little bit of difference between the GPU and the CPU. So you can see the differences here with the side mount and top mount. Now for standard gaming, 
obviously things are a little bit different and generally speaking i found that the performance here was quite good so you'll see that you've got around 54 degrees on the cpu and 66 on the gpu with the setup here and what i found was basically this was generally the case across most games bear in mind this is with the 5090 the graphics on ultra i've got ray tracing and other things set up also did cyberpunk 2077 doing the benchmark on that played some pubg some ready or not and a lot of other games all at 4k with maximum graphics and really push the system and see how we got on with it and then i found look getting around 66 degrees maximum and um, these sorts of tests and with standard gaming so 66 degrees on the cpu is not too bad now in terms of the corsair iq link setup when you go into iq you can then see which fans are where in the system so it lights them up in various different ways and you can then identify which fans you've installed in there as i said i've got six fans on the controller that came with the cooler and you can see them listed here and you can actually find out which fans are the right ones mounted on there then you can select those from the wizard and you can basically assign it to the cooling setup you can also drag things around and reorder them based on the lighting. And I've shown all this in the full-on setup guide that I did. But this means you can reposition them in the software so that you can then have the lighting syncing so that if you've got an effect that runs from one fan to the next fan, you can obviously make it look really good in that regard. You also have fan setup in here where you can then tell it which fans are specifically on the radiator so it knows which ones to adjust based on the cpu temperature so i've worked that out and now i can assign it to there and then you can choose your cooling profile from the cooling section which you can see you can then adjust and change and choose which one you prefer i was mostly running it on balanced mode which strikes a good balance between obviously good temperatures and keeping it reasonably quiet but you cannot for a quieter mode if you prefer the sacrifice a little bit of temp in exchange for it but it does make quite a bit of difference to the sound levels and then in terms of the rgb lighting you've got some very nice effects with murals and obviously you can go in and customize and play around with the individual lighting on the fans as well and a lot more synchronization but murals is really nice various different effects that are easy to switch between some of which are a bit too intense but some more relaxed ones and obviously just instantly applying these as well and you can get effects that will apply based on what's on your screen too it's worth bearing in mind so now i thought i'd just leave you with a sound test of what the audio is like from the case based on me just playing games and hopefully you found this useful. Thanks for watching.